Hello everybody, in this video I will talk not only about my favorite math books spanning for pure to apply math, but I will also recommend you what services to use for practicing your skills so that you might find alternatives to your standard choices. Before I forget, subscribe to my channel and share this video to help grow faster. An important tip I give you right away is this. Before starting the semester or your self-study, you have to select three types of sources. The first source, a main textbook to use for the theory. The second source, one or more reference books, had you find unsatisfactory some part of the main source, and at least one book to practice the theory. So let's start with the first subject, set theory. Set theory is the branch of mathematical logic that studies the collections of objects. It is a key subject because it's required to study subsequent subjects like, for instance, modern algebra and real analysis. Study set theory along with proofs. It is very important to get skilled at making proofs to make easier the study of algebra linear algebra and all those subjects that involve rigorous proofs. To this purpose, I recommend the books by Bloch and Velleman. However, I personally prefer the former because I love the depth of his explanations. After introducing informal logic, Bloch explains the four strategies of proof, the direct method, the method by contradiction, by contrapositive, and by cases. The second part of the book deals with sets, functions, and relations. Again, this is extremely helpful. If you study well these ideas now, Dealing with real analysis later is slicker. Calculus is the mathematical study of continuous change. In the same way that geometry is the study of shape and algebra is the study of generalization of arithmetic operation. Calculus includes the infinitesimal and integral calculus and is at the very foundation of every single subject you will deal with in your career. Mastering calculus endows you with the ability to differentiate functions, calculate objects, volumes, learn power series, which can be used to solve ordinary differential equations and are employed in mathematical physics to solve elasticity problems, for instance. Calculus is a huge source of techniques that can be used to solve real-life problems. To study the subject, I recommend the following three books. Calculus by Spivak for studying the theory and Calculus by Larson and Simons. Spivak's explanations are deep and mathematically thought of, one aspect that I particularly love, and give the chance to acquire competence. Larson's book instead is packed with literally hundreds of exercises and beautiful illustrations that you can refer to while studying Spivak's book. Number theory is a branch of pure mathematics which deals with the study of integers and integer valid functions with the analysis of prime numbers and rational numbers. Interracial mathematical contests account for problems in number theory. If you're interested on how to approach such problems, give a look at my video. To study number theory, I recommend Barton's book. Basically, is the only one I recommend. Elementary number theory, which I have used to solve international mathematical Olympiads problem. It is very well written and there are many examples. One way to get proficient in number theory involves making a lot of practice using mathematical contest problems. The fourth subject is real analysis. In the words of Terence Tao, real analysis is the branch of mathematical analysis that studies the behavior of real numbers, sequences, and series of real numbers and real functions. Real analysis is the theoretical foundation which underlies calculus, which is the collection of computational algorithms which one uses to manipulate functions. Many people ask, what is the difference between calculus and real analysis? Terence Tao provides the answer. Real analysis provides a sense of why a rule in mathematics, for instance, the chain rule works, how to adapt it to new situations and what its limitations, if any, are. This will allow you to apply the mathematics you have already learned more confidently and correctly. Study real analysis theory using these books. Terence Tao book, of course, supported by Royden's and Whedon's book. In my opinion on this, three books provide a sound understanding of real analysis altogether. For practice, I recommend Professor Rudin's book. And here I know what you're thinking of. Uh, that book is frustration. So now calm down let me explain. This book it is not easy, yes, it's true, but one invaluable aspect is the beauty and the rigor of its proofs and conciseness of content. You will not find additional irrelevant words and the exercises are also interesting. On top of that, you might want to try these additional books edited by the American Mathematical Society, which contain a lot of problems that will sharpen your skills. Those are expensive books, but the content is 
top notch. What about linear algebra? Linear algebra is the branch of mathematics concerning linear equations and linear maps. Linear algebra is central to almost all the areas of mathematics and science. For instance, linear algebra is fundamental in modern presentations of geometry for uh, defining basic objects such as lines, planes, and rotations. Also, functional analysis, a branch of mathematical analysis, may be viewed as the application of linear algebra to spaces of functions. Linear analysis is used in engineering heavily when we want to study the static and dynamic behavior of any structure. We work with basically sparse matrices having millions of entries. It's literally pervasive. To cope with such complexity, I give you the best books in the market. Study the theory with my favorite book, Matrix Algebra and its Applications by Karl Meyer. This book is, in my opinion, a gem. It is packed with interesting exercises and beautifully written theory. The author makes a great work at reporting historic background and at providing computational algorithms that can be used for your scientific research. I have personally solved a problem uh, through these algorithms. Use Gilbert Strang book as a reference book and also as an additional reference for practicing your skills. I also suggest you to give a look at Gilbert Strang's lectures on YouTube because they are invaluable. This combination of books provides a sound understanding of this beautiful subject. Abstract algebra is the study of algebraic structures like groups, rings, fields, spaces, etc. Abstract algebra is used in different fields, it is used to study topologies, simplify uh, differential equations, for instance. I suggest to study abstract algebra from Judson's book and to use Galen's book as a supporting book. Galen's book is uh, very useful for the nice exercises, so I combine this with Shams' how to line abstract algebra to have additional source of exercises. Topology is concerned with the properties of a geometric object that are preserved under continuous deformations such as stretching, twisting, crumpling, and bending. That is without closing holes, opening holes, tearing, gluing, or passing through itself. Choosing the right books in topology is pretty easy. Munkres topology is a must and it can be combined with topology through inquiry and Champs outline general topology. This combination provides you with sound understanding of this subject. Let's talk about ordinary differential equations. An ordinary differential equation is a differential equation containing one or more functions of one independent variable and the de derivatives of those functions. They are used ubiquitously in many branches because along with partial differential equations allow to describe dynamic systems. For the theory and practice of this subject, I recommend the following two books. Use Edward's book as a primary reference and give a look at the Tenenbaum's classic. This is a very old book issued by Dover Publications, which shows the analytical methods used to solve ordinary differential equations. Obviously, real world problems are solved numerically, but for those who are interested on the evolution of the methods employed to solve the equation, I think that Tenenbaum's book provides a good starting point. Complex analysis is the branch of mathematical analysis that investigates functions of complex numbers. It is used in algebraic geometry, number theory, analytic combinatorics in quantum mechanics, and for engineering applications too. For example, elasticity employs the theory of potential and is packed with complex analysis. To study this beautiful topic, I recommend these three books. Use visual complex analysis by Professor Needham as the primary source and complex analysis by French mathematician Serge Lang. Usually Serge Lang books require a mature audience and for this reason I recommend to combine it with Needham's a more gentle introduction. One strength of Needham's book is the number of illustrations that help grasp the idea behind the technique or a concept and the variety of nice exercises. However, one means, in my opinion, is probably the lack of solutions. That's why I recommend to use Shams Outline Complex Variables, which teaches you how to apply the theory. Next subject is differential geometry, which studies the geometry of smooth shapes and smooth spaces called manifolds. Differential geometry 
employs the techniques of differential and integral calculus and linear algebra. Originally, differential geometry arises from the study of spherical geometry, and we find it later in the study of a hyperbolic geometry by Lobachevsky. For an understanding of the subject, I recommend the following four books. The fantastic book written by Professor Do Carmo is a must, but an overarching coverage of the topics requires a second supporting book, namely Laurentius Differential Geometry. If you struggle with the material, I suggest Spivak's comprehensive introduction to differential geometry. There exist different volumes though. Uh, in addition to these three books, uh, and if you really are hypnotized by the subject, I suggest Needham's beautiful new book, Visual Differential Geometry and Forms. This can be considered a kind of twin of complex analysis. So if you already know his style, well, you will love the beautiful illustrations. Statistics is the discipline that concerns the collection, analysis, and interpretation of data. Statistics deals with every aspect of data, including the planning of data collection in terms of the design of surveys and experiments. And in the era of big data, in my opinion, is a must to know how to apply statistical tools to real world problems. Also, if you study artificial intelligence and its subfields, machine learning and deep learning, you must know, let me repeat it again, you must know statistics like your pockets. If you fail to understand basic concepts of statistics, you will struggle with the theory and practice of machine learning algorithms and you will not be a good scientist because science relies on the ability to run experiments, identify new patterns and interpret them correctly. Basically, three books serve this purpose effectively. The David Friedman's book is a classic in the field. It is packed with a lot of real world data and examples and it teaches you the ABC of statistics. If you want to study artificial intelligence and you want to bring your knowledge to another level, you might want to try an introduction to mathematical statistics and its applications. If you want to sharpen your skills, I recommend this unusual book, Problem Solvers Statistics. It is a huge amount. There is a huge amount of fully solved problems. Mathematical optimization or mathematical programming is the discipline that studies how to locate minimum and maxima of a function. Optimization problems arise in computer science, engineering, and economics. Two books basically, in my opinion, stand out. Fletcher's Practical Methods of Optimization and Numerical Optimization. These books are not easy in that there is a great deal of math involved. Ensure to have a solid understanding of calculus, real analysis, and linear algebra if you want to ease your comprehension. The last subject is numerical analysis. It's the study of the algorithms that use numerical approximation for the problems that arise in science. We need basically approximations because it is not possible to solve science problems using analytic techniques. In other words, real world problems cannot be solved using just a formula, but require methods that help approximate the real solution accurately. Two very helpful books uh, that will certainly help you understand this topic are numerical analysis and numerical methods for engineers. Even if you are not an engineer, uh, you will find useful Chapper's book because it contains very nice real world examples. Both books contain pseudocodes, but Chapper's book also contains source codes uh, written in MATLAB and VBA. So that's all for today. Just write down a comment to let me know what you think about or if you have found useful other books I didn't list out that would be beneficial for other viewers. So see you soon.